Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Chris, this is Salty Trip Channel, and today we have some more projects to get done on the Victron 24 volt system we have in here. And if you've been following along, we installed these uh, two Orion 24 volt to 12 volt converters to run our 12 volt systems. And I had a lot of questions about these things. We're gonna be addressing those. And also today, I'm gonna to be talking, uh, as as you know too, my uh, multimeter uh, broke on me, so I couldn't take proper readings from this. I had to use my in-command system in there to, to check it out. But I'm also gonna discuss uh, why you should have a multimeter and why you should have one either uh, this one or one similar to it uh, if you have an RV. So stick around and we'll get to it. All right guys, today the first thing that we're gonna do is um, I, I put board all the way up to here because that's all I needed at the time, but eventually I want to add another multi plus two and run it in parallel. And then, and according to them, they want them close to one another and the wire links to be the same and stuff like that. So we are gonna put another one right next to it. So eventually I wanna get this all shifted over here, but I don't have anything to really screw to over here. So we're gonna put up another board, measure it up, uh, paint it up and put it over here and get ready to move everything over. But also I might be a little crazy because I have these two 24 volt, 200 amp hour batteries in here and I bought a third one. If you remember, I partnered up with uh, Lead Time Batteries and uh, I already bought one that I've had for a couple months and they gave me another one to partner up with them. And then I bought another one, it was on sale. So, and you always want to, if you try to get lithium, you, you want to get all the, your lithium batteries that you're gonna have for your system all roughly within the same year. Um, once they get a little o over that, then their, their charge rates and max capacities and stuff will start to change. If you bought like a new one and you have an older one, and it may cause problems. So you want to keep them kind of close to a year, them together. So I've only ha I've had this one for a few months. I've only had this one for a few weeks. So and I just bought that one. Obviously, there's probably not enough room to put all three in here. I could stack it in here and put it in here, but I. I really don't want to do that. So we are probably going to move it into the bay over here and put all three of those in there and then I'll use this as a little bit of extra storage. But we want to check these Orions, uh, make sure they're both running the same exact voltage. Uh, because they're running in parallel, I want them to be running the same voltage. One might be just a little off another and I didn't have a multimeter at the time. So now I do, I'm going to show you how I use that. So let's get to it. All right, so we need about 15 and a quarter. We took a measurement in there and I'm just gonna line up my square. All right, while that's drying up, we are gonna go check those Orion converters and make sure they're running at the exact voltage we want them to. All right, guys. Before we uh, test these out, we're just going to go over this multimeter and why I got this one and why I think you probably need it too if you're doing any of these kind of systems or have an RV is uh, you want to be able to test voltage like AC and DC current. You know, you want to test your 120 volt systems and you want to test your DC 12 volt or 24 volt systems and stuff like that. So this one, you want to make sure you have one that does both. The reason I got this one too is it will not only do volts but it'll do amps so and it also has the clamp meter so you don't ha even have to plug in and, and hit the diodes if you have something that you want to uh, test on you can just put the clamp around it and you can do amp readouts um, and the way this works is this one in particular uh, there's there's a lot more out there like this but you just have to make sure that it does volts and amps uh, in DC, because like some, most of all, all of them do volts and amps, but not all of them do uh, volts and amps in AC and DC. This one does it in both. You switch to here, and if you see the little squiggly line, that means it's uh, AC current. If you see like a straight dash and like three dots underneath it, that's DC current. That's how you read those. And in this one, um, like it, it, it'll automatically go to AC current, but then you just hit select, and it'll switch to DC current. Um, and then if you want to read amps, you just go to switch it to the A, which, which it has a little squiggly line and a dash with the three dots, so it does both. That's why you have to, uh, it automatically go to uh, 
AC current and then you just hit select and it'll go to DC current. So you can just switch whichever one you want. And same thing with the clamp too. You can clamp this on and read AC current or DC current. This is the Klein Tool CL800. I'll leave a link for it in the description right below. And it comes with some uh, little uh, prongs to, to test with. And it also comes with a temperature gauge, which uh, we really don't need that much in here. The biggest thing you really need is volts and amps. You want to make sure there are uh it does other things too which will help you out with like when you do solar when you get your solar panels in you need to test them and this will help you do that and that'll be a different video because we don't even have solar yet that's coming um like i said before the reason why we got this system is it's it's easy to piecemeal together it, it can get kind of expensive so it's nice that you can do it a little bit at a time let's uh check these out what we're gonna have to do first is i'll put this isolator switch over here and we're gonna shut off the power to our 12 volt system. We got 24 volt coming in this way, and then we got 12 volt going out. So this will shut off uh, power coming from the distributor to these, and that'll kill all the 12 volt systems inside the RV. I wanna do these one at a time, so I'm gonna pull these off, uh, the wires off to keep them separated so they're no longer in power at all, test them, and then adjust them. Like I showed you before, there's a little knob in there that you can stick this in and twist it and it'll, it would be nice if like it had like a, a gauge or whatever, you know, that you could read and you know where it's at, but it doesn't. It just has a little knob that you turn and you're gonna have to do a readout to know exactly how many volts you're, you're pumping out. All right, so now I've got this, uh, this is the other 12 volt that makes it parallel with this one. And this is goes 24 volt to 24 volt, 12 volt to 12 volt. So that's 24 in, 12 volt out. And I've got that one separated so I can test this one and then test that one uh, so I can see if they're both reading the same. So we're going to kick this back on and we are reading 12.73. So we're going to crank that up just a little bit. 13.7. I'm going to do just a smidget more. We're, I want to get it to about 13.9. 14.2, a little too high. Back down just a little bit. That's 13.83, uh, 13.85. So almost 13.9 volts. So we're going to test the bottom one here. That one's reading 14.2, so we're going to try to crank it down so they're almost perfectly even. 13.5, crank it back up just a little bit. All right, so I got this one at 13.95, and I got this bottom one at 13.93. So that's about as spot on as you can get because it's just a little screw that goes back and forth. Just a little nutch, and it goes a little too far. So that's pretty darn close. We'll just check it one more time. 13.93, 13.95. I think that's going to do it. We will uh, turn the power back off, bolt this back up, and then we're going to have to move this. Remember the paint's drying over there. It should be dry here shortly, and uh, we'll install that. And the reason you don't want to set it at 12 volts is because, you know, as you draw power, that voltage will drop a little bit, and you don't want to drop them below 12 volts. All right, guys, so I just went and checked on the, the paint, and... I put a little bit more, uh, spray down a little bit more, uh, just to give it an even coat. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to take these batteries and move them into the bay, start prepping for connecting those up. And we just kick off our isolator switch over here, which shuts down power to the batteries. All right, well, we got them in here and they're not taking up too much space. I am going to probably build a box so that the connections um, can't uh, hit on anything and it'll leave a little bit of space here that I can slide another storage box on top of it. Um, and which will actually gives us a little bit more space in here to store some tools and stuff. And should work out pretty good. So we're gonna to have to make some cables that go from negative to negative to negative and then positive to positive to positive to run them in parallel. All right, so our board's all done. So we'll get this in and we're just gonna install them with some uh, self-tapping screws and it should be pretty simple. We'll just put uh, one in each corner and uh, slap it up there.
voila. All right, so we're gonna need to make six equal length cables to go from positive to positive, positive, negative to negative, negative to negative. And then we're gonna let these guys, we're gonna connect all these three and we're gonna let it balance out and we're not gonna hook it back up to the system until we let it sit overnight like we did with the, when, we, when we brought the second one on. We let it sit overnight, balance out, then we let it charge the next day after they balanced out. Like in previous videos, uh, I've showed you what you need is some crimps, and this is a two watt cable, some cable cutters, uh, a really a nice set is like a must have. Do that nice clean cut, and then a crimper. So we'll go over one of these, and then I'll just fast forward to the rest. Figure out about how much we need right there. Take these. You can need that. Take a razor knife. I just like using this. Go around a couple times and pop off. Put that on. Pop that off. Put your heat shrink on. All right, and then we just do one to the other end and we make a couple more cables. All right, so we got our evenly cut cables to parallel those guys together. And also I am going to put on, um, this is another fuse that's gonna be directly on the battery because the run is gonna be a little bit longer than it was before. There's a fuse on the link shunt too, but this is gonna be a backup. It's a 300 amp fuse, which you know, at uh, 24 volts is like over 7,000 watts, which I'll never probably use. But in case there's a short or something somewhere or we get an arc or something, this will hopefully blow because uh, each of those batteries can put out 200 amps. So there's max of 600 amps, which this is well below. So it'll keep our battery safe and hopefully keep the RV safe too. Well, we got these uh, wired up in parallel. So, all right, now that we've got uh, those uh, set up in parallel, they're balancing out. But uh, next we need to make some lines that will go back up to the front compartment, connect to the, the power there. But we'll leave the switch off so there's no power going to the batteries. But we'll just get rid the cables ready for that. You see me encrypt enough wire that you don't need to do that again. But so what I did was I just, uh, this is the, the negative and that's the positive. That's the fuse right there. And I just drilled a hole through there and it comes right around here. And I'm probably just gonna, once we get this thing moved over, I will probably fill this with some foam or something just to keep bugs and stuff out and, you know, keep the temperatures in there. There's a uh, two fold that uh, I keep by putting the batteries in there. And it makes more room for here for working on stuff in here. And also like, in the winter time, this is Florida, it hardly ever gets freezing temperatures. But if it does, they're in the bay where it's heated and the batteries aren't self-heating. So that'll take care of that problem if it ever occurs. I'm not real worried about it. I've heard people putting like um, on their lithium batteries, uh, like heating blankets, like you can get a 12 volt heating blanket and just kind of throw it over that. So that's not a problem. They're in the bay now. It's gonna leave a little more room. I'll put some tools and stuff in here. I got that put up over there, but I'm not gonna move everything until my new shunt comes in because this shunt is actually bad. It keeps faulting out and I have to keep uh, restoring the, the firmware. A new one's coming and once that gets here, we'll scoot everything over. I did a whole nother video about what's wrong with it. So uh, you can go back and check that out. So we're just gonna get cleaned up and wait for that shunt to come in. All right guys, so it's been a couple days. The temperature has really dropped, but we did 
finally received our new Link Shunt 1000. So we're going to replace this one that keeps the firmware keeps faulting out. And we'll send that one back to get our old money back. And also, what we're going to do is throw in a couple of bus bars for the 12 volt system. But uh, I'll show you when it's all done. But there's a couple other things you got to pay attention to because these cables down here for the that go to the MultiPlus, they're too short. I have to make some new cables and I have to make two sets for the next pair. And I'll explain to you why um, I got to do them in a certain way when we get to it. All right, guys. So I got everything moved over. I wound up pushing this up here and uh, putting the bus bars over here. And I still have enough room up in this corner for a uh, solar con charge controller, which, or I could possibly put it, um, it should fit either here or over there. And that's one of the good things about the 24 volt system is I can run over 2000 watts off of one MPPT charge controller. You can't do that with a 12 volt system. They don't make uh, charge controllers that are rated for that many amps to push down to 12 volts, but they can do it for 24 volts. So. That's one of the bonuses of a 24 volt system. What we have to do here is um, we need to run new wires to the multi plus two. And if we have a second one, they're supposed to be the exact same length. So this one's going to be the farthest one over. So I'll make uh, two sets exactly the same length and we'll be able to connect them over here to the links distributor. And when we do power this back on, when we do have a, a second inverter, uh, there will be no, they'll have equal amperage and draw and everything, so they, it should work better. And there's also some other parts that you're going to have to get to parallel two together, which we'll go through. You know, like hit that subscribe button if you want to follow um, this whole build that we're doing. And everything's coming a little bit at a time. I still haven't decided which way I'm going to go. Uh, I've, I've narrowed it down to two different ways how I'm going to parallel those wires together. We'll get these wires in and see you in a second. All right, guys, so we got everything moved over, screwed down. Um, I made, you know, two sets of wires, got an extra set right here. So when we get the other multi plus two, we can just throw it in and I already had the wires set up and we'll just, and basically this wire isn't long enough, but it doesn't have to be because I can transfer it to the next multi plus two over here. And then I'll just, I'll run another one from, from this one to that one. All the wires should be good. I'll wait to like, you know, screw things down until we get that settled in. But for now, uh, I think that's going to be perfect and it's nice to have those bus bars in case like I have a, a Viair air compressor for filling up the tires. I can just clamp it onto those and run my compressor instead of running it off the truck because it needs 12 volt. And don't forget you got to go into your VRM software with your, through your Servo GX and delete the old uh, link shunt and uh, the new one's just automatically installed and now we're just going to update it. And it's updating the firmware, usually doesn't take long. All right, so it's been updated successfully. Um, hopefully that takes care of, uh, you know, no more orange blinking light problem. And uh, that stays working great. And we're gonna send back the other one and get our money back. All right, guys, now in conclusion, we have 15,000 watt hours of battery with the 24 volt, uh, 600 amp hour system. Remember, that's the equivalent of, that's like 12 Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries in this thing and it takes up a lot smaller footprint and it costs like half the price so far these uh lead time batteries are being fantastic i'll leave uh links down in the description below in case you want to get some we are all prepped for another multi plus two i'm going to go through step by step how to parallel the multi plus twos together so hopefully that'll help you guys out all right so thank you for following along hope you enjoyed uh hit that subscribe button notification bell all that fancy mess and we'll see you guys next week